Ooh, guys, I got one today. I got one today. Check this out. Biggest product breakdown we're ever going to do. 12 bar. Medicro sent us a box out of the blue. Had no idea this light existed. It's called the Neo 1000, and I'm quite excited about it. We're gonna go through, break it down for you. I had no idea a light this size was out. Tell you what, Medicro, they're flexing on us, guys. They're flexing, they said, size really does matter. Why did you get it so big? A, that's what she said. And B, it's just because we can. So let's hit on a couple features that make the Neo 1000 the Neo 1000. We're gonna kind of start right at the specifics here. Let's hit the weight, guys. Weight is gonna be 33 pounds. It is a heavier light, 33 pounds isn't too bad, but because of the sheer size of this thing, I do recommend two people trying to mount this and get it hung together because it is massive. The length of this light is 68 and a half inches. When we go depth, we're looking at 43.3 inches. And then we've got the upsy downsy here at 5.2. So very little depth when it comes to the height, I guess. Uh, when we look at the light as a whole, you're gonna see everything out of the box. It does include rope ratchets for hanging the system. One thing that I really liked about it too, because it was massive when we opened it up, but guys, this thing folds down into four sections. So if you look at this right here, essentially it goes flip, 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 like a little sandwich, and you can fold this thing down, store it away, transport it. It's easy peasy lemon squeezy. In the box, it came with a 10 foot power cord with a 240 volt AC end. And I know not everybody runs 240 volt power. We're in Wisconsin here, and there's a lot of people that still love 120 volt AC. Medicro was super smart. They included a little plug adapter in the kit. And so now anyone who takes this out of the box, you're safe to run it straight 120 plug adapter right into the wall. You can run 240 if you're more on the commercial side or like that clean power. All of this, is determined thanks to the almighty Sosin LED driver that they built right into this thing. I give a lot of respect to light makers these days who are still incorporating a adaptable LED driver that's gonna hit both 120 or 240. This thing will go up to 277 VAC if you guys do need it. So you're covered. A lot of commercial lights, they're only doing 240 because they just don't see 120 as a necessary build-in. I still think it is for those guys who just like to run one or two lights. So we got you covered with that. Moving down the light, we hit on the oh, 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 so silky smooth Aura Control Dial, guys. This is where it starts to get really cool. I love this little controller. It reminds me of a little Nest dial from those thermostats. It's a stepless, silky smooth controller that basically is the smart brain of the light. Every feature and function built into this light is controlled right through there, nothing else. So what are some of the features that the Aura Control can run? Well, it kind of starts with the bread and butter. What we've got is an adjustable spectral range that you can choose between a veg or a bloom setting. So V1 spectral range intensifies vegetative growth. F1 intensifies bloom spectrum. So when adjusting this for a two-phase plant growth, you're covered. Moving down the line, it's also gonna hit on your standard dimming functions all the way down to 15%, which is what we have it set at right now. It's gonna cover your standard scheduling functions, 18.6, 12.12, but it also has sunset and sunrise modes if you wanna run them. When we talk about how do we link these lights, this is kind of one of my favorite built-in functions of the Neo 1000. They built in a thing called wireless Wi-Fi meshing. Okay, I've been doing this a while. I've seen a lot of commercial lights. I've seen Gavitas, Photon Techs, 
the list goes on. In most cases, guys, we need to buy a separate controller and we need linking cables. We, name, we may need adapter boxes. We have to buy all this extra stuff if we wanna link our lights, not with the Neo 1000. This thing has the ability to be set as a host. Once you set it as a host and preset its settings, every light that you set as a slave light to the host is going to take the same settings and operate them. And it is doing this all wirelessly and you easily connect each light to the host light. How many lights can you run? You can link up to a hundred of them. Throw away your cables, throw away adapter boxes. You don't need an additional controller. Guys, it's all built in. That's awesome. When we take a step back at this light, I'm just gonna say the sheer size of this thing, just looking at it, it's like you're getting two lights in one already. And when we wanted to turn it and throw it back into that four by eight grow tent back there, guys, this thing was just too big. We said, nope. You're gonna need a bigger boat. And in that boat, we found these. In one hand, we have our store handy dandy photo bio par meter, which we're gonna be able to give you guys a few readings here at different height levels. Uh, to give you that instant U-mole answer you want where things are at 6, 12, and 24 inches. In my other hand, we have the way, way overpriced Allied Scientific Spectral Meter. What this is going to do is we're going to go a little deeper into what the V1 and F1 spectrums mean and what makes them different. So we're going to get to this first. Let's take some UMOL readings and let's give you guys some instant answers of actually what this light is doing at 100%. If I look really white like I'm albino wondrous, it's because of the light intensity and I live in Wisconsin. It's not my fault. I was just born here. So here we go, guys. We got our photo bio meter on. I've got my sensor right here. We're gonna go real nice and easy. John, can you see that okay? I'm gonna go to six inches in the corner of this light, guys. We're hitting a corner reading, just so you guys know what the corner is doing at 100% F1 spectrum. We're looking at about 860 to 880 range is what I'm seeing. Now if we keep in this corner and we just move straight down the tape measure, we're trying to be as legit as possible for you guys. Everyone tries to say, oh, they did something fishy, this and that. No, we're not playing games. We just want to give you the real answers. 12 inches, 600 U-mole. We go down further. Here we go down to 24 inches in the corner. We're at a nice 400 U-mole. Not bad. Now, let's take this cart. Let's pull our tape measure stand system that we rigged up. We're gonna do a, what we would call a center position reading. This is kind of a reading where you know the plants under these center positions are getting the most U-mole because they are covered by the bars, they're not in a corner. Come on in, John. Six inch reading. I'm trying to hold this as steady as possible. We're at six inches. What are we seeing? 1240 U-mole. Go down to 12 inches. What are we seeing? 1130, not bad. And then we'll just drop her down to 24. Seeing about 740 range. Not bad. All right, so that kind of concludes our quick U-mole readings. Uh, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna get down to taking some readings off of our little ASINS Tech Spectrum Meter by Allied Scientific. But before we do this, guys, I gotta go run and grab my phone because this little overpriced tool only does app-based delivery. So I'll be right back. Now we did take some spectral readings already to provide to you guys for a basis of comparison in this video. But just so you guys know that we didn't take this information from any other company or off the web, I'm gonna do a live reading right here to show you 
what the spectrum is and its relative light intensity. So basically I have this little device connected to my iPhone. I'm gonna do a single test right here. It's gonna show all the parameter breakdowns. All I gotta do is hit next. I'm going to hit measure and there it is guys. So John, throw those charts up on the screen for our viewers to look at. We've got the V1 and the F1 comparison. Now, our main focal point here, guys, is what we've seen comparing these two charts, the V1 and the F1. It's pretty simple. Medic Grow has incorporated a 25% boost in the spectrum of the 660 NM LED chipset. What we've got is the 660 nanometer, the reds, the reds. They're boosting it by 25%. Now, reds are great. We all know we need reds for flowering. Of course, that's where it's at. Short internodial growth. We got thicker floral development and so on. But what I'm thinking is this. We need to think a little deeper on why maybe boosting by 25% right when we're changing the light cycle to 1212. We've always had that traditionally in a two-phase plant, veg to bloom. We go 18-6, 12-12, that's the rules kind of that everybody follows. When we switch to 12-12, the plant needs to recognize that photo period change and it needs to shift. We call that the shift, that two-week period from veg to bloom when it's already at 12-12. We see explosive vegetative growth and then flowering begins. But that period, when we think about it, if that spectrum is also being adjusted and the plant already is recognizing a 12-12 photo period change and you change the V1 to F1 at the same time as 18-6 to 12-12, we've got a spectral change as well as a photo period timer change that the plant should pick up on and that transition, that shift, should be a lot more efficient. Think about that and let that sink in, guys, because sometimes we need to think a little deeper on the science side of things. And feel free to chime in and give me your thoughts. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm right. But that's kind of how I'm seeing this as a beneficial added function by the Neo 1000. And I hope that helps you guys make some decisions also when you're doing your light, sh your light shopping. Um, so next up, guys, <sighs> long video. Next up. We're going to go into the Aura Control Dial programming. We're going to do it step by step. We're going to go through my favorite little dial wheel to show you that oh so silky smooth user interface. I just want to make people silky smooth. <laughs> smooth. And it's time to go through the programming, guys. Here is our Aura control dial. And as you see, this is probably one of the easiest dials I've ever worked with. It is a simple stepless motor that all you have to do is just rotate and it will go through each function. So simple. Now you can rotate to go through each function and then to enter function, you simply press in and it is going to allow you to go through each function. You press in to confirm and it will set in. I'm setting the time technically right now. You can go to the next one, set your timer. You can also set sunri sunrise and sunset by choosing them. If I wanna take this mode off, I just press enter and then off, select, and then you can hold down to exit back out. Go back into timer by pressing move over to spectrum. You can choose your spectrum. I'm gonna change it to V1 from F1. Hit it one more time to exit out. We can go back in to confirm it is on V1, exit out, go to grouping for Wi-Fi meshing. This light would be set as a host, group one, enter. You can change the group number. You go over to control. Now control is set to local control. What that means is, is this is essentially the host light. If it is set to local control, it is working off of its functions. But also if you go out 
and you go back to grouping, the group set in every light behind it, if set to group one, you would go back to any other light that you want to work off of the set local control master light and you can go in and you can actually go to external control. If you enable external control, it is going to search for the host light set to group one. Now, as you can see, it is blinking red. It's blinking red because right now it is looking for the host one, group one light that is set to local control. But because we don't have another Neo 1000 set, it is going to say, uh-uh, I don't got my settings, light isn't turned on. So here we are. It is waiting and searching for its buddy to show up in the Wi-Fi mesh range to basically give it its directions. And because it doesn't have its own set settings because it is searching for someone else, it basically is waiting. So if I get out of here and I change it to local control, select, checkbox goes in, local control is set, light comes back on, function is restored. If we go back out, we can go over to the last one, which is display. You can turn display on or off. If you leave it on, it is going to ask you how many seconds would you like the display to stay on while you're making adjustments and you walk away. Currently, we have it set to 15 seconds. After we make our changes, 15 seconds goes by and then display goes dark. That is really the gist of all the settings. I went through every setting needed in what? A couple minutes. So when we look at this light, guys, the final thoughts, the breakdown, what we're seeing with this light from Medicrow, the Neo 1000 is showing us value. It's got a supreme design and they're packing in a lot of function. You're getting a fully functioned commercial light system at a price that is a very value-based price. And it's not only the value, it's also, guys, the innovation. The innovation coming from that little smart Aura controller, it's like a little brain box that has some of the newest features from the stepper dial all the way into the Wi-Fi linking. It's got a lot built in. And think about it, you don't need a lighting controller like other companies sell. Those can be 200 to 400 bucks. You don't need linking cables. You don't need adapter boxes to run the linking cables. Think about all the other companies on how they link lights. This is effortless linking. Now, the two things, guys, that I thought it could have used that I would have loved to have seen built in is UV chips and maybe app control function directly from your phone. That would have been awesome. But the truth is, guys, I've always had a champagne taste with a Pabst Dirty 30 Blue Ribbon budget. So I'm willing to accept those two things that I saw missing out of this light and definitely say this is a light that I would recommend to my friends to use. I would buy it myself. But of course, you guys make your own decisions. Do your own research. We're gonna keep the boards open as always down below. So what I'd like you guys to do is chime in for me. Tell me what your favorite light is and why. I wanna see if our community, our board, has one light out there that everyone's talking about that maybe I don't know about. I'm always looking for the best products, the best lights to talk about. It's always what we do here at Garden Supply, guys. I always appreciate you guys tuning in and watching till the end, whoever does. Subscribe to our channel, like our videos, keep us motivated to keep making these videos for you guys, and of course, hit the bell notification. We're, we're Garden Supply Guys in Green Bay, Wisconsin. As always, thanks for tuning in.